By now, you've likely heard something about the NAR settlement case, and much of what I've heard on the news and rumor mill has been blatantly false or misleading. So in this video, we're going to go over what you need to know about the $418 million NAR lawsuit settlement. First off, I've heard so many times that 6% or the 5% commission is gone. It's, uh, it's no longer a thing. It's no longer required. The funny thing is it was never required. There's no standard compensation for real estate agents. Whether it's 5%, 3%, 2%, there's no standard. And this idea that all of a sudden it's some magic number and compensation for agents is gone is pretty silly and just shows that whoever wrote that article doesn't really know how the industry works. Okay, so here's how it has been working. A seller will list a property and in that listing agreement they will state we are going to offer 5% or 6% commission and it'll be split typically evenly between their agent, the listing agent, and the buyer's agent. So let's say uh, for sake of argument it's going to be 5% commission. So they're going to pay their listing agent 2.5% to do all the listing paperwork, get on the MLS, get it sold, market it, all that kind of stuff. And then they're also offering the other half of that 5%, the other 2.5% to a buyer's agent who brings a ready, willing, and able buyer for the compensation for doing the work and bringing that buyer to buy the house. So that's how it's been working as far as buyer compensation goes. The seller pays for it. Now with the NAR settlement, providing that the judge agrees with the ruling or the settlement, sellers will no longer be required to provide buyer's agent compensation, which legally they weren't required to anyway, but also means that the buyer's agent isn't required to show a house if there's not gonna be any compensation involved. However, I think most sellers are smart enough that they're gonna keep offering buyer agent compensation in one form or another, because if they didn't, they'd be at a competitive disadvantage to the sellers who are offering compensation. I don't know anyone who wants to work for free, and if you're a buyer's agent working with a buyer, showing houses, and one property, they're offering to pay you for your work, and the other one they're not willing to pay you. It's just human nature. You wanna be compensated for your work. Now for home sellers who do decide to offer compensation for the buyer's agent, MLSs or multiple listing services where every agent has to put in their listing and where all the buyer's agents get to see what the property is available, MLSs will now be prohibited from publishing if the seller is offering compensation and if so, how much. Which is going to require you know a phone call basically from the buyer's agent to the listing agent saying hey is your seller offering compensation now another thing to note is that all compensation will be negotiable as to how much and if the buyer's paying it or if the seller's paying for it it'll all be negotiable now one of the big changes that's going to make things challenging is that the buyer's agency agreement needs to be signed up front which is fine it's basically a professional contract saying that me as the buyer's agent is going to represent you as the buyer and your best interest the challenging thing is part of that is you have to agree up front what your compensation is going to be and who's going to pay for it without knowing what property or if there's going to be a seller offering compensation so that unfortunately is going to put the buyer on the hook for providing compensation if the seller isn't providing any compensation so my guess is that the way this is practically going to play out is there's going to be workarounds. Basically, the seller's not allowed to offer compensation that's visible in the MLS, but more than likely, they're still going to offer something. And it might be in the form of providing the, the buyers with some sort of you know, rebate or closing cost or something. If the buyer is the one technically paying for their agent's representation. But if you think about it, really, in the end, it's still the seller who's paying for that compensation. It's just being paid in a different manner. So it's really kind of a silly workaround, but and the seller's gonna end up paying for it in the end. Now, one of the big concerns here isn't necessarily this is gonna put downward pressure on buyer compensation rates, which it might. If sellers do start offering less compensation or none at all, this is gonna put the onus on the buyers to pay for their own agents out of pocket. And last time I checked, housing affordability is at an all time low, meaning it's super expensive to buy a house. Between the high interest rates, the amount needed to close, you know, cash to close, what they call it, as well as the additional fees of buyers out of pocket, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on how much their down payment is and the market, and, you know, prices and that sort of thing. So many buyers are already at the top of what they can afford for a house, and now they're gonna be expected to come out of pocket even more to pay for their agent. Well, I understand on paper this makes sense that the buyer pays for their agent, seller pays for their agent, but what I think is going to happen and the fear is that buyers are going to start foregoing having an agent or representation, which means we're going back to how it was 30 years ago where only sellers had representation and the buyers got the short end of the stick when they're buying a house. Now, I don't think anyone wants to go back to those days. So bottom line for all this, buyers agents will still be compensated for their efforts 
though it may be through a different mechanism than what we're used to. Moving in the direction of having the party who gets the representation pay for that representation, meaning sellers are paying for their listing agent and buyers are paying for theirs, makes sense on paper. I hope that practically this ends up working out without buyers feeling like they need to forego having representation and just try to buy a house by themselves. I see this very much along the lines of getting into a legal battle and the other side has hired a lawyer to help them and you're trying to represent yourself don't think it's going to work out very well. So with all these changes coming down the pike, it's all the more reason to find a quality, experienced, and full-time real estate agent to help you find and buy your house. This will not only ensure they can walk you through these changes, but also represent your best interests and make sure that you guide it through the process as you find and purchase your next home. Now, obviously, if you're in Seattle, that qualified, awesome agent is me. Happy to help you. If you're outside the Seattle area, I have a link below where you can uh, schedule a consultation. I'm happy to connect you with one of the over 3,000 referral partners I have across the country who are also full-time and up to speed on all these changes and what's going on in their specific markets and are willing and able to help you. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video. Thank you.